let me introduce you to solving trig equations. We're going to look at the unit circle, we'll unwind that and look at the graph of trig functions. We'll talk about how to restrict our answers when we're solving these things and the different types of equations you may see along the way. I'll give you some tips and steps for solving and then we'll do a couple practice problems. This really is just an introduction to set us up to solve. So let's get ready. You should have your notebooks and pencil. You can have your trig identity reference sheet and a unit circle if you have it, but I have it built in here as well. So let's look at the unit circle and think about what is the sine of pi over four. So that means I'm going to go to pi over four and we know that the sine is opposite. My hypotenuse is one. So it's going to be the y value of my point, which is root two over two. So then if I ask what's the inverse sine of root two over two, that's asking which triangle has a sine ratio that's root two over two. Well, that happens at pi over four, but it also happens at three pi over four. And sometimes we're only going to want one answer and then we would use, use the capital S for the principal answer. If it just has a lowercase s, then it would be both. So let's unwind the unit circle on the graph and the sine of zero is zero, the sine of pi is zero, the sine of two pi is zero. The sine of pi over two is one, we're at the top of our circle. And then somewhere in there we have these three y values, so we go like this, three. And that would be the start of my graph and that comes from the first quadrant. So we're gonna say Q1 for quadrant one. And then to work my way down the second quadrant, I would have three more steps and then we would be at zero. And that's going to be quadrant two unwound. Then when I make my way down to negative one, we're gonna have three more points in there. And this is gonna represent the points from quadrant three. And then we have quadrant four to finish us out. So if I only want one answer for each of these trig functions when I'm trying to solve them, I don't wanna pick this one and this one, which were pi over four and three pi over four. So we wanna come up with a way to restrict it so we only have one positive answer, and then we'll need to do the same if we want negative, because if I wanted negative root two over two, I would have two possibilities there. So what we're gonna do is if we're restricting to the principal trig function, then we're going to use quadrant one, and that would be between zero and pi over two. Quadrant three does give me negative, but it would be kind of weird to then restrict it between pi and three pi over, over two. So what we're gonna do to sort of keep it more continuous is if this is negative pi over two and I were to graph backwards that piece, that would be from quadrant four, because remember this sine graph keeps going. So here's quadrant four and here's quadrant four. So we're going to restrict it between negative pi over two that's theta, and pi over two. So if you're looking for a positive, you're in the first quadrant and you're between zero and pi over two. If you're looking for a negative, you're between negative pi over two and zero. And then what happens is we're looking at that part of the graph. So it doesn't have that gap where quadrant two is. When we're thinking about it on the unit circle, let me erase some of this stuff over here. Then what we have is if we're thinking positive, we're going up to pi over two for a po oh, positive answer. And if we're doing negative, then we're going down to negative pi over two. Oops, negative. So positive, we're in quadrant one, negative, we're in quadrant four. And we didn't graph tangent, but tangent is going to have the same restriction. So tangent will be restricted to quadrant one and four for positive and negative, and it will have the same restriction between negative pi over two and two, pi over two. Cosine is going to be a little bit different. So when we think about graphing cosine, the graph starts up at one, at pi over two, it's also at one, at pi, it's down at negative one, pi over two and three pi over two, it's at zero. And then that's my first quadrant. So that's quadrant one, it is positive. And then, so this is positive for the cosine and quad, I don't know, I can't write writing one, positive for quadrant one. And then if I keep going, that's negative and that's quadrant two. And that's just nice and consecutive. 
So we're going to use that restriction for cosine. So that's quadrant two if we're talking about the inverse cosine of a negative. So we would say that cosine is going to be restricted between zero and pi. And that's how you use it, quadrant one and quadrant two. When we start to do these problems, you're going to see different types of directions. If they're looking for the principal answer, just one answer, one positive, one negative, then you're going to use those restrictions. So sine is going to be quadrant one and quadrant four and tangent. And cosine is going to be restricted to quadrant one for positive and quadrant two for negative. More often you're going to see one of these and then it's referring to the unit circle. That is interval notation. The only difference is, is with the hard bracket, it includes two pi. So if two pi is your answer, you would include it. This is not including two pi. And if there is no restriction and they want every single answer, remember that a sine graph really goes on forever. And I'm gonna show you on the next page, um, but we're going to have to include this plus pi k or plus two pi k. K is just talking about the repeats that keep going. So let's look at this one. It, um, the blue graph is the graph of sine, and then the green graph is one half. This is up at one half. So if I was saying, when is the sine one half? Well, it's at pi over six and five pi over six and 13 pi over six and 17 pi over six. So I don't wanna be listing all of those. If I think about them on my unit circle, we're talking about the little triangle pi over six and the little triangle over here, five pi over six. But basically I wanna get all of those rotations. So we could say that X is pi over six plus another rotation, which is two pi K. And then it's just going to keep re rotating and that's what the K is for. And then we'd have to say five pi over six plus two pi K. Sometimes you can get away with just adding um, plus pi K. Um, and we'll see that if we end up with plus or minus one half, then we would have this triangle, this triangle, this triangle, and this triangle. So I could just say plus pi, and that would get me there, and then it would get me back, and then I could do it for there. Some steps and tips for solving. Um, like we were simplifying, you often wanna be able to get it to one trig function. So I'm gonna suggest that. Then you wanna isolate or get the trig function by itself on one side. This is a big one, do not divide by a trig function because you will lose answers. So if you had something like sine x plus sine squared x equals two, no, equals zero, um, you don't want to do sine squared x and then subtract over a negative sine x and then divide by sine. You don't wanna divide by sine because you're throwing answers away. If you take the square root, you do have to remember the plus or minus. Then you're gonna just solve for the variable using your inverse and apply any restrictions according to the directions. So let's try a couple. We're gonna to try to solve this. I am told that it's on the unit circle. Notice there's no equals underneath, so it's just between zero and two pi, but not including two pi. I'm going to undo the algebra. So this is different from verifying where we could only work on one side of the equal sign. We are back to regular algebra. If you do something to one side, you have to do it to the other. So I'm gonna divide by two and I get the sine of x equals one half. So I'm trying to think of when does the sine of x equal one half? So we can write x equals the inverse sine of one half. That's what we're doing. But what we're thinking is when is the sine one half? And that's gonna be my little triangle. So x is going to be pi over six and five pi over six. Now, if it only said the principal answer, then it would just be pi over six. So if it said capital sign of x equals one half. If it said many answers, then we would say pi over six plus two pi k and five pi over six plus two pi k. And let's try this one. We are on the unit circle again. Um, I see cosine on both sides, so I'm gonna get cosine on the same side and I'm gonna subtract that root two over. So I'm gonna add cosine to both sides and then I'm gonna subtract the square root of two. So I combine like terms to get two cosine x equals negative root two. I'm gonna isolate that cosine, get it by itself. So I'm gonna divide everything by two 
and I get negative root two over two. So we're on the unit circle, and I wanna think about when that happens. So just a quick little sketch, when is cosine negative? Well, that's my medium triangle and my medium triangle in quadrant two and three. So we are at x could be three pi over four, x could be five pi over four. Now, if we were talking about the principal and we're doing negative, then it's only x equals three pi over four. If we're talking about all of them, then we would add the plus two pi k. And we'll practice some more in class. Good job.